Let's, let's go to Book of John, John chapter 3, our familiar verses. John chapter 3, we're going to look at verses 1 through 7. John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. The title of the message is, Are You Really Born Again? Are you really born again? Are you really born again? John chapter 3, verse 1 through 7. The Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 1, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Verse 7, marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Brother Jay, can you please pray for the message? Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you first of all for salvation. We thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ, which was shed on Calvary's cross to wash all our sins away. Thank you for the indwelling Holy Ghost, whereby we are sealed unto the day of redemption. Thank you for the King James Bible. Thank you for... By a local Bible in church where we can gather freely to worship you and to sing praises unto you and to listen to your word. We ask you, Lord, that you fill your pastor, the pastor Jay, with your Holy Spirit and help him to preach and declare the whole counsel of God unto us. Open our hearts, minds, and ears to your word. Help us not to focus on the things that are happening outside or the things that are happening in our lives, or things that are going to happen in the future, but help us to wholly give ourselves right now unto your word. Protect us from devil's attacks, and those who are not saved, those who are not born again, pray that today will be the day of their salvation. Mm -hmm. Thank you, I love you, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Are you really born again? It's, a, it's the most important question to any person in this world. Are you born again? I mean, Jesus Christ said in verse seven, marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. So in order for you to go to heaven, it's obvious, you have to be born again. But are you really born again? That is the question. Whenever the word really means, there are certain questions that comes along with it. There are certain things that's happening where people can be confused and question what born again really is. Some people make born again out to be of this very secret thing. Only very, very, very select people can be born again where they're part of a certain religious sector. Jesus Christ came down to die for sinners, all yeah. sinners, right? Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Lord did not say that Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that some should come to repentance. Lord wants everyone to get saved by trusting Him as their Lord and Savior with repenting heart. But when it comes to born again, it's a hot topic because no one, I wouldn't say no one, not a whole lot of people really know what it means to be born again. No. They hear it all the time. Yeah. You see all these, you know, coverages of, you know, prisoners say they're in prison and they say, you know what, I'm born again now. I'm born again. And what are they referring to? I'm a born again Christian. What does that mean, right? I mean, first we're going to go through some of the misunderstanding of born again. First thing is that born again is not water baptism. Number one, born again is not water baptism. Right. Two billion Catholic folks, you know, they're following 
water baptism, infant baptism, baptism of regeneration in order to go to heaven. The word comes out now, regeneration. So what is regeneration, right? If you're not regenerated, then you can't go to heaven. Amen. I almost, you know, titled today's message, Are You Regenerated? And I thought that would be too much, right? But regeneration and born again is the same. Amen. It's a new birth. It's a second birth, right? Yes. It is something happened inside of you where there is a new man that's been created. Where you become a new creature, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Amen. So are you regenerated? Are you born again? Yeah. I mean, Ephesians 4.24 says, And put ye, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Are you regenerated? Are you born again? Amen. Many folks... Because of lack of good teaching, because lack of right Bible, yes. they refuse or they don't even know. Right. That's why sometimes people say, I'm saved, but I'm working to be born again. Mm-hmm. Born again is not a progression. Right. You don't work to be born again. Amen. It's an event. Yes. It happens in an instant. Amen. If you do not know if you are born again, I'm not saying you're not saved, but you have to check. You definitely have to check. And number one thing is that if you think that born again is water baptism, then there's a red flag everywhere, right? You got to stop whatever you're doing and then really check your salvation. Think about it. If you think you could go to heaven in your current sinful state, you're foolish. Something has to change. That's why Jesus Christ said in verse 3, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot say the kingdom of God. But this is where many of the false teachers, prophets, cults, whatever you call it, misleads people. Verse 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. These two are different. Uh, If I read the English correctly out of King James Bible, they sound different. One says, (laughs) you must be born again. Second one says, be born of water and of what? Of the Spirit. They're two different things. But all these religions out there, right, they combine them too. So now they make you think that you need to have water baptism in order to be born again. I mean, think about it. That is how Satan works. Satan will deceive people. And the best way to deceive people is to make sure that people misinterpret, misbelieve. People get the wrong meaning out of the word of God. So suddenly, people start thinking that, okay, I need to be baptized to be born again. And because of that thinking, a lot of people think that when someone asks, you know, so when did you get saved? When did you get born again? When were you regenerated? Oh, yeah, you know, I could give you a date, right? February 21st, you know, 2015. That's when I got baptized. Right? We hear that all the time. We hear that all the time. It's sad, but a lot of people who listen to you know, our YouTube channel, who listen to you know, Bible-believing YouTube channel, they get all this knowledge, good knowledge, of deep doctrines. But when it comes to their salvation, man, they don't have clear salvation testimony, or they don't even know exactly what those salvation terms mean. That's why before you go and eat real nice rib, right, or wagyu beef, or good meat, you have to be founded upon the right stuff first. Milk. Yes. 
good stuff as you grow, then you need to be clear on your salvation doctrines. I mean, there's justification, right? Mm -hmm. You know. I mean, there's what? Imputation? Yes. Adoption? Yes. Reconciliation? I mean, there's a lot. Yeah. Instead of going to where aliens came from, instead of trying to always learn about, you know, what is it, Nephilim, those giants, sons of God, you know. I mean, Leviathan, it's very interesting, right? It's fun to study the Word of God. That's why the Bible is not boring ever, you know. There's a great, great things to learn from the Word of God. But get your salvation straight. I mean, you could explain to me everything about the, you know, deep stuff. But if you can't explain to me how to be born again, I don't know what to say. Yeah. It's like you're telling a kid, kid comes up to you. Let me show you how to do calculus, right? right. E equals MC squared, okay? <laughs> He's already wrong, but, you know. And then he goes, okay. But, okay, can you tell me what's 2 plus 5? I can't tell you. I only know the deep stuff. That's foolish. Yeah. You don't use that too much. Who uses calculus every day of their life? Not many people. Very few. But who uses like addition and subtraction every day? All of us. Yeah. You know. Simple. You know, today I needed to (laughs) subtract and you know add. How long it's gonna take me to get to church, right? Yeah. You know, I needed to know know, how many you know points am I going to make today. And then you guys, right, how many meals I'm going to have today? Maybe I should minus one for my health, right? You know, maybe less carb today than how much portion, right? So you do addition and subtraction every day. So as a Bible believer, every one of us have to be grounded and be strong on the basic stuff. Yes. Yes. Amen. That's why we encourage each other. That's why we go out there and witness to folks because those basic stuffs are the ones that you'll be using majority of the time. But if you're not strong in your basic stuff, it's not going to work. When someone gets interested, okay, you know, tell me about, you know, sons of God. Tell me about, you know, great tribulation. So you get a good conversation going. And okay, now I want to get saved. You know, you know, I heard this term, you know, born again. I want to become a born again Christian. What does that mean? Okay. You know, you're like, oh, okay, I need to do more on that. But let's just start, let's discuss more about the aliens, you know. <laughs> then you lose that opportunity yeah. for that person to come to the knowledge of truth and get saved. Yes. So born again, again, it's not water baptism. Amen. It never was and it never will be right. water yeah. baptism. Water baptism is not mentioned. The water itself is not mentioned in you know, John 3, 1 through 16, where 16 says, For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life and get baptized by water? No, it stops right there. So there's no water baptism mentioned anywhere in John 3 1 through 16. There's no water baptism mentioned anywhere within the new birth, connected anywhere before or after it, in either testament, new or the old testament. But it's a great opportunity for people like John Calvin's of the world, Augustine's of the world, Pentecostal, Catholicism, Campbellites, everybody to use this as their mechanism to bring people and hold them to their church. Almost like hostage, right? Yes. You know, some religious sect will be, okay, you don't do as what we say, man, then you're going to burn in hell. Not according to what the Bible says, right? Our position is all about the Word of God. You don't do as what the Bible says, then you got burning hell. Simple as that. Don't argue with me. Don't argue with the pastors or brothers and sisters here. Argue with the Word of God. Argue with God himself, right? But so many places, they say, you have to do this. And if you don't do it, we hear stories. People who came through our church, they say they've been alienated, Right? I mean, the people whose own family, literal family, will never stop talking, will never talk to them ever again. Because they left that church, whatever church it is. I mean, that's foolish, right? I mean, if someone 
leaves the door, are we not going to just talk to them ever, right? I mean, obviously, there's different situations, right? But when it comes to knowledge of truth, when you talk about, you know, right doctrines, our mouth should never be stopped, you know, from preaching and teaching Amen. and telling others about the right doctrine. Yes. And because of John 3, verse 5, all this, it started with, you know, say, Augustine, Calvinism, Catholicism, and everybody else is following. Yeah. I mean, there's Presbyterians now, they require you to do water baptism. Yeah. And it's not even a right baptism, I tell you, water baptism. It's sprinkling, sprinkling yeah. of the water, you know. They just sprinkle it, right? Yes. You can't even feel it sometimes, no. you know. And then they think, and that's, that means that now you're regenerated, right? I mean, regeneration, again, means rebirth, right? New birth, a second birth. It doesn't happen because of, you know, sp splashing some water. I, know. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be people who want more blessing, who's more greedy. They're like, don't splash me water, pour me the whole thing, you know? Yeah, like, that's how foolish people have become. But that was really blinded the minds of so many people, yes. right? That's why you and I have to go deeper when we witness to folks, right? Because everyone, I know you have sincere desire to lead others to the Lord, especially your close ones, right? Even your families, cousins, co-workers, you know, yes. your neighbors, everybody. You can't just stop there. I'm not saying you have to become a you know, Gustavo interrogator, but there are certain things that you just have to check, right? I mean, first of all, the person has to remember when they got saved. Yeah. It's foolish to say that, you know, I'm saved. When? Uh -huh. well, that's none of your business. Oh, what are, okay. <laughs> it's like telling somebody, are you married? Yeah, you know. Are you sure you're married? None of your business, right? <laughs> I mean, you will tell people, and especially if such a great thing that has happened to you, yeah. you can't close your mouth, right? No. Then you're going to say, okay, oh, man, I got saved. I was born again. I was regenerated, you know, back in, you know, for me, like back in, you know, 1998, you know, you know, April. And then you could just say it because you could, you truly remember when you got saved. Exactly. I mean, that's a great point. You know, were you not there when you, when you were born again? When you were regenerated? Was there someone else there? I mean, were you, like, high? Too high to understand, right? Right. So don't be offended, people. Amen. You should be happy, the fact that they want to know. Yeah. But it shouldn't stop there, okay? Just because they tell you the date doesn't mean anything, no. right? It's in the right direction. But how did you get saved? How did you become born again? Number one answer. I was baptized. Bang. Believe it or not, that's, that's number one answer. This day and age. Because too many people have that background. I'm, I'm sure that they tell me the, they're telling me the truth that they did accept Christ. However, they're not only trusting Christ to go to heaven. That's the problem. Right. They're trusting water baptism to go to heaven as well. Yeah. When it's Jesus plus something we always preach, you, you can't get saved. No. It's only through just one person. That's why Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. Amen. No man commands unto the Father but by me. He didn't say, I am the way, the truth, and the water baptism. No. <laughs> He didn't. You know, water baptism is ordinance. Mm -hmm. It's show of your testimony yes. that you're saved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's not a condition of salvation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if you're following ordinances, you know, these commands and traditions to go to heaven, like, you know, some of the religions are asking you to do or telling you to do or forcing you to do, then you're, gonna, you're on your way to hell. Yes. Right? Yes. This is what Dr. Ruckman said. 
those poor, unsaved, ungodly people who profess Christ and let, let Christ come into their lives, and these modern, hell-bound sinners who talked about believing in Christ go to hell by putting words into the Bible that are not there. Simple as that. Devils confess Christ is Lord. Right. Yes. I mean, well, are they saved? No. no. So many people go to hell by putting words into this word of God that are not there. I mean, can everybody go back to verse 5, John 3, 5? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Where's baptism? I just see agua, right? Mul, right? I mean, water. Where's baptism? There isn't. Then why are people putting another word into God's word? That's why people get confused. That's why people don't get saved. Because they refuse to accept the Bible and the word of God as is. They have to put their own opinions. They have to put their own thoughts. And ultimately, it's the devil. Right. devil has to confuse people, mislead people, so that they'll burn in hell. Yes. And just to go over quickly, you know, what does this water mean? So we have two births here. So first birth is born of water. Water, you know, Genesis 1.20, that's where life came from. Right? So that's why you hear... You know, when our mothers went before or when they're having children, they'll say water broke, right? Yeah. Our body is 85% water. Amen. So life comes from water. It refers to what then? Our physical birth. Yes. You know, this is what it means. If someone were to ask you, except a man be born of water, that means physical birth, our first birth, right? We all have it. He's just answering Nicodemus, verse 4. How can a man be born when he's old? He, can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? So he already is referring to the first birth, yes. physical birth. And Jesus Christ is answering. He says, okay, you're right, Pharisee, <laughs> spiritual doctor, right? Yeah. You know? Yes. But you have to be born again. That's why verse 6 says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So your spirit has to be born again. So water and spirit makes all the sense in the world. You need, you have physical birth, but in order, what this born again means, your spiritual birth, which is your second birth. That's why regeneration is, again, new birth, right? And secondly, you know, another misunderstanding, people think that born again means reformation. There's a new change in my life. I used to steal, but I don't steal anymore, right? I used to hit my wife, but I don't hit my wife anymore. I used to lie, but I don't lie anymore, right? I used to cuss, but I don't cuss anymore, right? You know, like those life-changing stuff. You know, reformation is not born again. Amen. You know, it's just your behavioral change. Nothing happened with your spirit, Right? So if you think that born again means suddenly, you know, I woke up and I see this birth talking to me. You know, you gotta, you're a nice husband. You know, you're a nice wife. You're a nice child. You know, you should act this way. Then suddenly, you know, I became a nice person, gentle person, kind person, meek person. That is not born again. That equates to your experience. See, first one was what? More relying on water baptism. Yeah. Second one is relying on your experience. That's why Pentecostal Assembly of God, you know, all those camp, I mean, those guys, what are they doing? They think that you, you are born again if you start speaking in tongues. Yeah. Speaking in tongues is never born again. Right. Yeah. I mean, again, when you study Book of Acts chapter 2, 
Tongues are referring to a language. And it's not about gibberish that people do, la, 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 right? Like, hallelujah, you know. Yeah. Some churches, you, they start teaching kids at a young age, you know, like our kids over there. Like, okay, time for you to repeat after me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And they start saying it faster. And then it sounds like they're speaking in tongues. Like, la, 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 la. Oh, man, your spirit feel, you know. You're a born-again child, right? You know. You become like this hurricane, Holy Spirit experience people. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I feel like I'm a tornado, you know, going all about. I'm, I'm like, and they say dumb stuff. Yeah. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm baptized by fire, you know. I mean, okay, you, wanna, you know what that really means, right? You got burning hell, right? They don't even know what they're talking about. Yeah, so this misunderstanding is everywhere. People say, you know, I need to be born again. Instead of knowing that that's an event, it happens once, just like that when you trust Christ as your Lord and Savior. Because John 1, 12 says what? But as many as received him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God. Even to not believe on his name, he does not not say you have to do it multiple times. Right. Every single week, like some churches make you do, do a sinner's prayer every single week. No, just once. Christ died for us once. Right? Yeah. So you have to understand, being born again, it's not about, it has nothing to do with experience. Amen. Nothing to do with experience, right? You saw Jesus Christ in your dream, you saw the devil, okay? That's not being born again, you know? You see these clouds talking to you, that's not being born again. Oh, I see this vision of God in the clouds, or... Ah, some, some people have crazy ideas. I'm walking, and suddenly I stepped on a puddle of water. It splashed, and it looked like, you know, a divine, yeah. divine sign, right? Yeah. yeah, a lot of times it's the Mary way, right? I'm pretty sure Mary is definitely sad up there in heaven, seeing how many billions of people are being deceived, you know, devil using her name, yeah. right? Yeah. But think about it. When it comes to born again, you have to check yourself, right? Are you really born again? Have you trusted water baptism ever? Have you trusted in your experience ever, right? Yeah. Then there's, uh, there's something's wrong, right? Right. It's not clean. No. It's polluted. It can't never get up to heaven unless it's pure, just washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, and that's it. Amen. And him alone can do it, Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we always emphasize Jesus Christ plus something will not give you new birth. You can. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. I'm pretty sure many of the preachers and the folks here heard this verse. I have heard these phrases before, you know. Dr. Ruckman used that a lot. Born once, die twice. Born twice, die once. Yeah. But we're living in the day, born twice, and we might not see death you know, if the Lord comes back. Amen. That's the, what we're looking for. Ephesians 2, verse 1. And you hath he quickened who are dead in trespasses and sins. So when we're born into this world, we're born as a sinner with a dead spirit, yeah. Yeah. right? Yes. Because we are child of the devil. John 8, 44, you are of your father, the devil. Yeah. Our image is not God's image anymore after Adam and Eve sin, right? Yeah. We're in the image of Adam. Yeah. So we're born with the dead spirit. So our spirit has to be quickened. It has to be alive again. That's regeneration. Amen. Then, simply put, how can you be born again, right? This is where people get really messed up, right? Answer so simple to us because we're in a Bible-believing church. But a lot of people, how can you be born again? They don't go to this. You know, Bible clearly has the answer. Amen. But where do they go? 
they go everywhere else. Sometimes they go to people. Yes. Yeah. Pope John the 17th, right? He blessed me at one of those gatherings, you know. I, I stepped on the footsteps where he stepped, you know. Yes. Uh, and of course, all these experiences. Yes. I went to this prayer hall, prayer cave, you know. There's like prayer caves somewhere, right? Like in places like Korea, you know, they have a, like a scary place. I don't want to be there. Probably full of the devils, right? And then uh, you're just praying there, being filled with the devils, right? And then you, suddenly you feel so renewed. You know, just because you feel renewed doesn't mean you're born again, right? right? I mean, just because, again, we're going back to it. Because some sign happened in your life, you're not born again, right? God uses the word of God. Amen. Right? Nothing else. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. That's why if your salvation, it's almost like this. Me and my wife, we are officially married. We have a marriage certificate. Are you born again? Where's your certificate? Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. You need to have a proof. And that's, that's why when you start talking to people and they say, you don't need to know, it's just between me and God. What does that mean? You're a fool. That guy you're talking about is devil, right? When you can't even say, right? Verse 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Amen. Verse 25, but the word of God, but the word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. So through the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, through the word of God, incorruptible, word of God, you and I can be born again. Amen. So if you're, whoever's, here, whoever's listening, if your testimony does not include being born again through the word of God, then you just have to check. Check again, right? Nothing wrong with double checking, right? I mean, someone has a $100 million bank account, okay? Someone said, hey, I think you need to check again because I don't think you have $100 million. You know, you might be short by 50 million, or you might be short by 99 million, right? Someone might have deceived you. What do you what's the first thing you're going to do? You're going to run, and you're going to go to the banker or something, or your online app, and you're going to check everything. Make sure that you have that 100 million. Salvation is billion, trillion times greater than that. Amen. Yes. You can't compare salvation with money. No. Wouldn't you want to check? Yeah. I don't want to. I, it's not about being offended or anything. Who are you to be offended again? Right? Are you that pious? You know, whenever I hear the word pious, it's all about Catholics. Like those Pope, right? They're called like Pope Pius the 15th, <laughs> Pope Pius the 25. I mean, why? None of us are pious, right? right. We're sinners just saved by grace. Then why is it so hard for you? Why is it so offensive to you when someone asks, are you really born again? Because I could understand. Because you don't know. You just don't know. When someone's like insecure and someone doesn't know 100% by looking at our children, right? If they didn't do their homework, hey, it's seven times seven, 48. You know, answer 49. If they didn't do their homework by studying, you might be right. <laughs> because they know the answer is either 48, 49, or 47, right? It's a late 40s. And they're like, okay, so it is 48. Yeah, I told you it's 48. Then you're like, you're wrong. It's 49. 
That tells you you didn't study, right? Same thing. Same. But it's life or death. Yes. Heaven or hell. I mean, you got to take it seriously. Yes. You can't say, I think I'm born again. Mm. Well, what does that mean? It's either yes or no. God is all about, you know why I love the Bible so much? It's always yay or nay. Right. Yeah. Yes, sir, no, sir. That's it. Yes. Especially when it comes to salvation. You know, let's not be smart aleck and, oh, what about this doctrine, that doctrine? You don't even know the answer, okay? <laughs> you know, God knows. But when it comes to salvation doctrine, God made it clear. Because he wants to have that assurance. He wants to be saved. You, and if you are saved, he wants us to know for sure that where we're going after we die. Yeah. But if you don't know, then you have to make sure. That's what the Bible says. Now is the day of salvation. You know, people say, okay, let me think about it. Let me do it tomorrow. What? When? If it's not that important to you right now, it's not that important to you tomorrow. You know, we learn, as, you know, as many of our brethren and our you know, pastors have gone through, people who say, you know, I'll do it tomorrow, they never do it tomorrow, right? They might do it once they get into this huge tragedy in their life. But why would you have to always wait for tragedy for you to move? That includes unsaved and saved people. Yeah. People only look for truth when something really bad happens to them according to their own standard, right? I mean, the Bible says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. So through the word of God, you can get saved. And born again is just that instantaneous event. When you trust Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have a new man, and you have a new birth, yeah. right? You have new, you have a regeneration. Yes. That's as simple as you can get. Obviously, you know, as Pastor and other people mentioned, I mean, there's other salvation doctrines that you need to be familiar with and learn, right? But at least when it comes to born again, you have to understand that your death spirit is alive again through the Holy Ghost, Right? Because Holy, Ephesians 2 1 said, Holy Ghost will, you know, quicken your spirit by trusting Christ as your Lord and Savior. Not because of water baptism, not because of any of the, all the, you know, holy acting, right? Not because of speaking in tongues, right? Not because of seeing a vision or church membership, right? Or anything else. Good works is not being a born again. Right. You're giving a lot of money to charities and church does not mean you're born again, right? right? That just act, you know, that just works, right? Yes. This is spiritual. We're talking about spiritual thing. Amen. And if you trust Christ as your Lord and Savior, by trusting the gospel, yeah. not different gospel, right? right? Gospel of Jesus Christ, then Bible says being born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible. Yeah. Word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. And this is the greatest proof and this is the greatest assurance that you and I have. They could try to say anything. They could try to, you know, brainwash me, everything. Yeah. But I could tell you, I know I'm going to heaven. I'm born again. But the Bible says so. Amen. And I know God is greater than anybody. Yes. And that his word. Yes. It's, it's, the Bible says, live it and abide it forever. Endure it forever. Best proof. If someone, if someone remotely tells you, hey, you're not born again, you're not saved. This book says I am. Yeah. Amen. Huh. It says it. Who are you? Are you better than God? Right. Are you greater than God? No. This book says it. Then why would you ever, you know, doubt your salvation, right? If you have proof, right? Yeah. Even if you're living like the devil which many Christians do, yes. even if you don't ever get right with the Lord, obviously because of that you might doubt your salvation, right. but the Lord will judge you, don't worry, you reap what you sow, right? Yes. But the word of God is the clear, Amen. most perfect assurance. Then as a Bible-believing Christian, if you're saved, what are you doing? Just keeping it for yourself. Come on. You gotta be out there, preach the word, in yeah. season, out of season. You have to. I mean, as we meet many, many folks that come to our church, we're realizing again and again, there are very few samples of the greater 
population who's trusting devil's doctrine to go straight to hell. They use Jesus' name all the time. Contemporary Christian music, this wicked liberal churches out there, so-called Baptists nowadays, Mm -hmm. they do everything, but they just add Jesus' name at the end. They just add that sinner's prayer at the end, and people don't even know what they're doing. And then they think that they're saved. They think they're born again. They think, you know, they don't even know regeneration too much, right? So they think that they're going to heaven. Thinking, not being sure, will eventually cause your eternal damnation. When that happens, what what do you think is going to happen? You regret the rest of your eternity, turning into a worm in the lake of fire. I mean, you know, thankfully we have some artistic people where our walls are turning into something, you know, beautiful to look at. But it always reminds me of Dr. Ruckman's drawing of that hell, yes. that person burning, but turning into a warm like figure, right? Yeah. And that's where so many millions and billions of people are headed. You could be one of them if you're not born again. But as a saved person, if you're born again, you can't let these billions of people in your life to go straight down over there. Right. I mean, they don't deserve it. You say, oh, you know, they deserve it. They killed everybody, blah, blah, blah. They done this. But Jesus Christ died for everybody. He died for murderers. He died for thieves. He died for you and me. I mean, all the think about all the sins that you've done in your heart. We all deserve to burn in hell. But he died for all the sinners. And we cannot compromise. We can't be like, you know, elites or... Oh, we have to, okay, he's conservative, I'm going to win this too. He's liberal, I'm not going to win this too. No, no, you witness to every single creature out there, right? Good or bad, big or small, whatever political affiliation they have, right? You have to. If we don't do it, then who's going to do it, right? You will always have that Holy Spirit conviction, you know, poking you. Yes. Hey, hey, hey. Give a track, witness. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Stop wherever you are. Do what I tell you to do. <laughs> but, you know, majority of the Christians will just say, oh, no, not today. You know, not tomorrow. Oh, not after tomorrow. You know, I have other brothers and sisters, pastor, who's going to do it? No. And you know, Bob Jones always says, right, I'll end with this. Problem is with you. That's it. It's always individual, one, every one of us. Yeah. So we have to understand. Now, if you know the true meanings of born again, hopefully you are saved, right? We pray you have to get right with the Lord. And if you are born again, it's time for you to go out there and then make sure preach the word. Yeah. Make sure that people know the, what the real born again is, yes. real regeneration is, what the real new birth is. Instead of water baptism and all this healing and feeling and everything, church members, everything in between. Every head bowed, every eye closed. (laughs) Salvation is very simple. Even a child can get saved. But because of devil's confusion that he brought, many souls are on their way to hell, not knowing the clear gospel of Jesus Christ. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, you know, Jesus Christ died for your sins on the cross, shedding his precious blood. He was dead, buried, and he rose again. All you have to do is, as a sinner, you have to know that you are a sinner on your way to hell. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. You have to admit that you are a sinner on your way to hell. And having repenting heart, because God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, come from your own ways and turn to the Lord and trust Him in your heart. Nothing else. Get rid of, recant everything that you previously believed in, whether it was water baptism that you thought could save you, whether it was good works, whether it's being a 
you know, some pastor, your roles or your membership. Get rid of all of that thoughts. Turn from those things and trust Jesus Christ alone. With that mindset, you can get saved and be born again by trusting him into your heart as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you're not sure where you're going after you die, if you don't know if you are truly been born again, wherever you are in this prayer, knowing that you're a sinner on your way to hell, believing that Jesus died for your sin, shedding his precious blood, believing that he is God, with repenting heart, receive him in your heart as your Lord and Savior, get saved from hell right now. Dear God, I am a sinner. Please forgive all my sins. I believe Jesus is God. I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for all my sins, shedding his precious blood. With all my heart, the best way I know how, I receive Jesus Christ into my heart as my personal Savior and Lord. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you pray with all of your heart, no matter what other people ever tell you, no matter what your church, wherever church you go to, you're saved and you're born again. You have received new life. You're a new creature. And there's been a new birth. You've been regenerated. And I pray that Anybody who's still having any issues or questioning, you go to the Word of God and get clarity with the right doctrine and get saved and receive assurance. Dear Father, thank you for saving us from hell. Thank you that you have given us this gift of salvation. We didn't have to do anything. We're just a sinner on our way to hell. But you died for us. You shed your precious blood. And thank you that all we had to do was trust you as our Lord and Savior with repenting heart, Lord God. I pray that you bless the rest of the services, and I pray that number one thing, Lord, you come soon, Lord. Even so, come Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.